Busy Hardy Gardening. This is part two of the combinations throughout the summer garden. Here at Hardy's Cottage Garden Plants that we created for people to come and view. Please do enjoy watching the video. This one is Devaricata Chattahoochee. This is a lovely one. It wants a little bit drier conditions. Next to the wonderful GM Fayum Samabor, which has a gorgeous dark centre to its leaf, and this little phlox has a dark centre as well. So full sun, drier conditions for these plant materials, and they just go well together. A little bit of viola in there. The viola then picks up the white of the um, plant at the back behind the GM. That is your Melitus. Uh, Melitus. The good white form one is really lovely. Dark aquilegia in the back there. And again, Circeum, but this time done as a clump, just without anything going through, but the beautiful wafting of the cow parsley behind it. And all of this is just making everything soft and just giving you height. And in behind the Circeum, you've got Ruum. So that is your ornamental rhubarb. That is Ace of Hearts, so that's the small leafed one. But on the reverse of the leaf is the beautiful purple, the same as that Circeum. Really, really lovely. The Viola, that'll creep around and be really nice. And then behind that is the Libertia, Libertia grandiflora. And in amongst that is some small leaved hostas. Now, a lot of this is quite tightly packed together, but it will all be able to show off and you get to see it all in its beauty, looking really, really good. And as I say, the white mellitus, so anything heading into the back, it's slightly drier ground for these plants. Reasonable soil, we're talking about something that is neutral for the most of these plant materials. But because of the way that the sunlight comes down, the sun is at the front of this border, but at the back it is shadier. And then you have a hedge behind that. So they are in shade, the back plants are in shade for quite a time and the other ones are in the sun. Then we move along to an area of planting, which is not a lot of color in here, but it's got yellow and green and it has form. So you have the beautiful hosta cherry berry there with its variegation, yellow variegation down the center. You have the upright spikes of the Baptisia solar flare. And then you have the Alcamilla, one of my favorite plants, just beautiful all of these soft colors, and then you have the fern as well. It's that soft green, that soft sort of yellow tint, and it all looks really, really good together. And when the wind blows, you can see everything has movement, and it just makes a difference when the plants are soft and they billow, and then everything is as it should be, as it should be out in the garden, looking really, really wonderful and superb. Then at the front here, little tiny pink flower. This is Rubus articus. Now Rubus articus is a beautiful little alpine raspberry. It's low growing and it has your typical Rubus leaf and this lovely pink flower, and it will just meander around underneath plant material. It's quite nice to just pop something different in the way of color in amongst these things. And there's a lovely white flower that you can see just tucked in the back. And that is Ranunculus aconitifolius, the single flowered form, a brilliant plant. And how about this to just give you shock and color and vibrancy? And this is what cottage garden plants are all about. Calandula Indian Prince, isn't that stunning? Look at the bronzy orange on the back of the buds and then there's the open up. They gradually go from deep burnt orange to that much more brighter orange. And against the silver, they look fantastic. And what about going against that bright blue? You know, this is just wonderful. This is clashing maybe, but I think this is wonderful. It just shows up. And then this wonderful yellow spiked plant here is Asphodeline lutea. It has grass-like gray foliage. It's a very old cottage garden plant. 
and it's not used as much as it should be. These plants like to be in a drier, sunnier area, free draining soil. The asphodeline will live for years and years and years. And once the flowers have finished, then the gray foliage just sits there and it's a good contrast. Just tucked down in the front there are some chives as well. So, you know, you've got all of this working really well. And then just to top it off, a little bit more of the Eliagnus quicksilver and a little bit of Physocarpus. All of this blends together and gives you that zing, which I think is needed every now and again. You don't need it everywhere. Just suddenly come round the corner to something which says, hey, look at me, bright and sunny, and it's wonderful. And obviously with calendulas, they will seed themselves around. And it's great, just means you have to thin them out every now and again. Now, if you want to be a little bit more calm and you want to just go down a tone, then you add a little bit of white. White is cooling. White will draw your eye in a little bit like yellow does. Just the white foxgloves there. Coming down to the beautiful Pulmonium Lambrook mauve. An old variety with wonderful foliage, re-blooming, makes lovely clumps. And then you can just go into a bit of yellow. Now this yellow doesn't jar. This yellow just goes, hello, I'm here. Look at me, lovely yellow daisy. And look at that against that dark hedge there it shows itself off and it just pings out at you. And then you can go into blues, such as the Anchusa again, and the blue of the lupin with its different shaped foliage. And then you can drop down and you can go to a heuchera. This is an old variety, strawberry swirl, has um, silver variegation on its foliage and soft pink flowers, just lovely. So you've got your ups and downs. You started with your digitalis, down to your lambrick mauve, up to your Deuronicum down to your heuchera, to your spikes of your lupin with its flat leaf. And the blue against blue works because the lupin has got a white center to it. The Anchusa has a dark, so they contrast against each other even though they are spikes. Their foliage is different. This beautiful iris, Kent Pride, always has dark purple markings at the bottom of the leaf and then up to these amazing brown and yellow flowers. Aren't they beautiful? Now the flowers are over quite quickly, but then you're left with the foliage and that will hold other plants up. So you can mix it with something like GM red wings here and they just all go together. The red, the blue, the brown, the tones, they all get there. Your floating allium heads, the gray behind, or the dark green behind. Changing your background contrasts always helps with a garden because you're not always looking at one solid wall that's the same color. Change what is the hedgerows, small leaf, big leaf, dark, light, and it does make a difference to how the flowers that you plant in front ping out. And remember, some things, they come up on a long stem, they have a round ball like the alliums, and they look as though they're coming from other plant material, which is brilliant. Thank you very much for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel.